dangerous thing when I make announcements and then I, I pray for particular people and I thank the Lord that they're home and then I forget people. So I forgot to congratulate LD and Sherry, right, on the... I'm sorry. And Miss Tori, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you. She had a rough, I don't know, three weeks. So, but I'm glad you're here. I know there's others I missed, so if I missed, and I'm sorry, forgive me. Um, <clears throat> Bob did tell me that Vicki wanted to say thank you for everybody who prayed and sent cards and things like that. She's tired of being in solitude. Is that, is that the right word? <laughs> Solitary confinement. So if you want to visit, she'd love to see you. Somebody also asked me this morning if I'm going to finish Colossians. No. Because we're going to the book of Ruth. You're like, why? So find Ruth in your Bible. I'll give you a few minutes to find it. It's this awkward silence of me trying to find it, too. But I wanted to go to Ruth for a couple of reasons. I talked to my dad this past week and I said, Dad, if I knew that all of this stuff was going to come within the first two years of us being here, I wouldn't have said yes. <laughs> he said, I know. And I was like, thanks, Dad. But I don't mean that in a bad sense. It just seems like everything was kind of coming unraveled. Everybody was getting sick, and there was just challenges. And then we got a text that Candace's dad was in the hospital, and he's okay, and it's going to be, I think, his gallbladder. And then we get another, well, on Friday, I took Titus and Jubilee to Gunnison to meet my dad because they were going to stay with him while we went on the youth retreat. And so while I was driving there, I had to go back through Crawford and on those crazy roads. And so then Candace called me, and I was praying, Lord, please don't let anybody else go see Jesus. And I was praying as I was driving, and my phone rang. And your phones don't work much over there. And I was like, hello. And I heard, and I thought Candace said, two more people died. And I was like, I about died driving off the road. And then I lost signal. And it was like another hour before I could call Candace. And so I just prayed, Lord, please no, Lord, please no, please no, please no. And I called Candace, and she told me that it was her dad's best friend who had a brain aneurysm who passed away on Friday. And I was like, Lord, I'm trying to trust you. I'm trying to trust you. And I talked to people in the church a lot, and and I just ask them how they're doing, and, and I've been a little bit discouraged, to say the least, and go, God, what are you trying to teach us? And I was reading through Ruth, and I think I want to share a few thoughts with you about Ruth, where I was challenged. Because the big idea of Ruth is really faithfulness, right? Faithful, be faithful. And I just want to challenge you with the same things that I've been challenged. So we're going to jump in, and we're going to cover, y'all are going to die. But we're going to get through four chapters. I can do it. We're not going to read them all, but we're going to do it. So I'll give you a little bit of background information. The author of Ruth is unknown. It was written roughly about 1000 B.C. And the theme of Ruth would be a kinsman redeemer. You all know what a kinsman is? Okay, just buddy does. Okay. A kinsman redeemer. Let me read this quote to you. It says this, quote, the story teaches that God rewards the faithfulness of his people. God accomplished this by using Boaz as the family's kinsman redeemer. Kinsman redeemer refers to a relative who helped a troubled family member so that the family was not dispossessed of land or left without heir, end quote. So a kinsman redeemer is a relative. And, and before we, we get into the specifics of the book of, of Luke, Ruth. Why did I say Luke? I'm sorry. But Ruth, I want to read Ruth chapter 1, the first five verses. 
Listen to what it says. Now it came about in the days when the judges governed that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the land of Moab with his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Milan and Shalon, Ephrathites of Bethlehem in Judah. Now they entered the land of Moab and remained there. Verse 3, Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They took for themselves Moabite women as wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they lived there about ten years. Then both Milan and Shalon also died, and the woman was um, bare... I don't know how to say that, of her two children and her husband. So the book of Ruth is taking place during the time of Judges. You all know this, that when we look at the Bible, it wasn't that that all of these events just took order in this way, right? Like Genesis and then Exodus and things like that. So Ruth took place during the time of the Judges. Do you know what Judges is about? Do you remember the ferocious cycle that they went through in Judges? Yes? Anybody else besides Buddy? Okay, good. All right, good. The ferocious cycle, right? They would would do well. They would be faithful to God, and then they would sin, and then they would be convicted, and then they would repent, and then there would be a judge that would be brought up, and they would do what was right, and they just went through that cycle. Any of you go through that cycle sometimes? Any real quick? Okay, good. LD's like me. (laughs) But I think if we're honest, we all go through that cycle. The family that is involved in the book of Ruth is you had Elimelech who was married to Naomi. They had two sons, and these people are of the nation of Israel, specifically from Bethlehem and Judah. There was a famine in that area, so they all headed to Moab. Do you all know much about Moab? Let me read this to you. He says, quote, Aside from Bethlehem, Moab, the perennial enemy of Israel, which was east of the Dead Sea, stands as the only other mentioned geographical or geographic national entity. This country originated when Lot fathered Moab by an insensuous union with his oldest daughter. Centuries later, the Jews encountered opposition from Balak, king of Moab, through the prophet Balaam. For 18 years, Moab oppressed Israel during the judges. Saul defeated the Moabites, while David seemed to enjoy a peaceful relationship with them. Later, Moab again troubled Israel because of Moab's idolatrous worship of Shemosh and its opposition to Israel, God cursed Moab, end quote. In other words, if we want to highlight a couple of things, the nation Moab arose from an ungodly relationship in Genesis chapter 19, verse 37. They had a god that they worshipped, and the god's name was Shemosh. In Numbers 25, verses 1 and 2, the Moabites dishonored God, and the nation of Israel began to partake in this horrific sin. The two sons marry two ladies who are in Moab, Orpah and Ruth. The father and the two sons pass away, leaving Naomi, Orpah, and Ruth. As we look quickly at the book of Ruth this morning, I want us to see how God uses those who are faithful to Him and His Word. You know, we've gone through a few trials. We are going through some trials, but may we be a church that is still faithful no matter what comes our way. Look at chapter 1, verse 14. 
He said, or it says in verse 14, and they lifted up their voices and wept again. And or Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Then she said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. Verse 16. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Thus may the Lord do to me, and worse, if anything but death parts you and me. When she saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So essentially, what has happened is you had these three ladies. The three ladies left Moab and headed back to Judah. Naomi told Orpah and Ruth, they said, you two return back to your, to your home because she has no other sons to give to the ladies. Orpah returned back to her mom. And however, Ruth, what did Ruth do? Ruth clung to Naomi and said, I will never leave you. In other words, Ruth made a commitment to remain faithful to Naomi regardless of the cost. You and I as believers, we need to be committed to being faithful. We see that in chapter 1. Let me ask you a question. We're small. We can interact a little bit. Have you ever made a commitment to someone regardless of the cost? I'm just curious. Have you? If you're married, you made a commitment to your spouse, right? Yeah, Miss Lori's like, Keith and I, yeah, right? You make a, a, a commitment, no matter the cost. For those of us, and I think it would be all of us this morning, for those of us who know Christ, how are you and I doing with our commitment to Christ? How are we doing with our commitment to His Word? Let me be honest, it's been hard for me. It's been hard. Not that I would not be faithful to God, but you know the, the verse in 1 Peter? Cast all your cares on Him because He cares for you. Is that easy? It sure sounds easy, doesn't it? It's hard for me. It's hard for me. I'm like, God, I, I want to, to fix this. I want to fix the situation. But God says, I want you to be faithful. How about that verse in Timothy where, where it says, when we are faithless, he remains faithful. Isn't that great? How are, how are you and I doing it, being faithful to God in his word? You know, Dean said, October has been a rough month. Isn't that, isn't that what he said? Y'all, October for us has been a rough month for like 18 years. October was when we had our car accident. October was when the Lord took my mom home. October is now when the Lord took Miss Marilyn home. Y'all, let's just start skipping October. Like, let's just like, just jump to Thanksgiving early. I wish. But you and I, we are to be faithful to Christ in the good times, in the hard times, in the difficult times, in the times when you don't understand. We still have to be faithful to God. Otherwise, the Christian life is, is easy, right? I'm going to follow Jesus when, when life is good. But we've got to follow Him when life is hard. Look at chapter 2. Verse 1, it says, Now Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Please, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after one in whose sight I may find favor. 
And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Verse 3. So she departed and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. You know, I don't know a lot about, like, harvesting stuff. See, when I interned in Delta in 2003, I can't remember who it was, but there was a really nice guy in the congregation, and it was not Mr. Tuck this time. It was another guy who owned a cornfield, and he asked me, he said, Jake, do you want to come pick some corn? You have to remember that I'm a city kid. I have no idea what I'm doing. And I said, sure. And so I drove out to his field, and I thought he was going to be there. He wasn't there. I don't know how to pick corn. Yeah. I was going to break the whole stock off and walk home. That was not the way to harvest it, was it? Like you're supposed to pull the, the ear of corn off or something like that. And so I found this passage interesting when, when Ruth was going to do what? She was going to go and get food. She was going to go do some harvesting. Ruth made a commitment. She said, I'm going to be faithful to you, Naomi. I'm going to be there. And here's the challenge of her faithfulness, right? The challenge now is she's got to go gather food when she does not know them. Now, some of you think that I do really well with people that I don't know. Does anybody think that? I just want you to know. I just want you, when I go to a family reunion, I'm off by myself because I don't know those crazy people, even though they're family. I am a super, super shy person. Y'all are like, no, you're not. I really, truly am. And so when God puts us in a situation to do something that maybe stretches us, it's hard. I can only imagine how Ruth felt. She's to, to go out and gather up barley throughout these different fields. In fact, it's an extremely dangerous task for her. If we look at chapter 2, verse 22. There's a risk of her being assaulted. Keep in mind that, that Ruth is not in her own land, which is probably scary, isn't it? Can you imagine? But she made a, a, a promise to Naomi that, that I will be faithful. I am not going to leave you. Look at chapter 2, verse 6. Look at what happens. Verse 6, it says, The servant in charge of of the reapers replied, She is the young Moabite woman who returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Thus she came and has remained from, from the morning until now. She has been sitting in the house for a little while. Look at verse 8. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Listen carefully, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field. Furthermore, do not go on from this one, but stay here with my maids. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Indeed, I have commanded the servants not to touch you. When you are thirsty, go to the water jars and drink from what the servants draw. Verse 10. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? Boaz replied to her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me, and how you left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and came to a people that you do not previously know. May the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me. Indeed, you have spoken kindly to your maidservants, though I am not like one of your maidservants. Wow, 
Wow, Ruth didn't know how this was going to pan out, did she? She said, Naomi, I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to stay with you. And then all of a sudden her faithfulness is challenged. Hey, go to this strange land, go to this field to get barley. And do... Could you imagine? She had no idea what was going to happen. But God blessed her for her faithfulness. Boaz owns a field and tells Ruth, he he says, Ruth, go gather up barley from from my field. Ruth's response was one of of the utmost respect falling on her face. She questions Boaz. She's like, hey, Boaz, why are you being so kind to me? And Boaz says, I've heard what you've done for Naomi. I've heard how you have left your father and your mother. You've left your native land. You've come to a people that you do not know. And Boaz's conclusion is this. The full reward will be given to you from the Lord. Look at chapter 3, verse 1. Verse 1, it says, Then then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you? that it may be well with you. Now is not Boaz our kinsman with whose maids you were? Behold, he winnows barley at the threshing floor tonight. Wash yourself therefore and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. It shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies, and you shall go and uncover his feet and lie down. Then he will tell you what you shall do. She said to her, All that you say I will do. We don't have time to go through and talk about why this whole setting is being set up to go uncover his feet and do all of that stuff. But could you imagine? I mean, I I like to use my imagination to some degree. And it's not very good. But could you imagine uncovering the feet of somebody you don't know? I mean, honestly? I mean, it wasn't like she was like really good friends with Boaz. She met him in the field and things like that. Can you imagine uncovering this, somebody's feet that you don't know very well? The, the only time that I remember doing something like that is there's this, this really nice guy. He came to church one time. Do you remember Bill? I call him Crazy Bill. Crazy Bill uh, is a good friend of mine. And he walks around Cedar Edge all of the time. And... Um, I said, Crazy Bill, why haven't you been at church? He goes, oh, I'm not a morning person. And he told me, he said, Jake, he said, you can come wake me up. I said, do you know what you just did? And I told him, I said, Crazy Bill, I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to uncover your feet and I'm going to drag you there by your toes. And he's like, no, you're not. That's the only experience I have with even thinking about uncovering a stranger's feet. But I, I just, I can't imagine what Ruth is thinking. You see, Naomi gives her some very strict instructions. Go and uncover his feet. Can you imagine what's going through Ruth's mind? She's faced with a decision to make. And and what does she say? The end of verse 5, all that you say, I will do. I don't think Ruth was sitting there going, ah, let me pray about it for a while. She obeyed immediately. Sometimes with our children, when we tell them something to do, they're like, what? Let me think about that. And I was like, no, don't think about it. Just go do it. Ruth just obeys. Remember what Ruth said in the beginning of chapter 1? She said, Naomi, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to care for you. I'm going to... She made this commitment. Now, Ruth is faithful to it, isn't it? Isn't she? Even when challenges come and difficulties come, she goes to this strange land and she goes out there to get barley and the Lord blesses her and and protects her. And then Naomi says, here, I want you to go do this. If I was Naomi, there's lots of things that would have to change, but just 
think with me. If I was Naomi, I could tell you I wouldn't have obeyed. I would have been like, not on your life, Naomi. Thank the Lord I was not Ruth. Look at verse 9. As a result of of Ruth's obedience, look at what it says in verse 9. He said, this is Boaz, who are you? Y'all ever been woken up in the middle of the night? What do you do? Who are you? When Candace and I hadn't been married very long, I can't remember exactly what was happening, but, but I grind my teeth. I ferociously grind my teeth. Like I'm, and so it's really, really loud. And we hadn't been married very long. And Candace heard it one night, and she rolled over. She woke up, and she looked at me, and she woke me up. She goes, what's in your mouth? I said, nothing. She goes, open your mouth. I was like, ah, move your tongue. See, I don't do well when I'm woken up in the middle of the night. But, but, but just picture this. Verse 9. Boaz says, who are you? She answered, I am Ruth, your maid. So spread your covering over your maid, for you are a close relative. Then he said, May you be blessed of the Lord, my daughter. You have shown your last kindness to be better than the first by not going after young men, whether poor or rich. Let's just think about application. How are you and I doing with being faithful to God and His Word when challenges come our way? When we have a a COVID outbreak in in our church, we have the Lord taking people home. Praise God for them. But are we going to respond like Job at the end where he says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are we being faithful even when challenges come? Maybe even when things that we don't like, or maybe we don't understand, are we continuing to be faithful to the Lord? Look at chapter 4, verse 8. Chapter 4, verse 8, it says, So the closest relative said to Boaz, Buy it for yourself. And he removed his sandal. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, You are witnesses today that I have bought from the hand of Naomi all that belonged to Elimelech and all that belonged to Shalon and Milan. Moreover, I have acquired Ruth the Moabitess, the widow of Milan, to be my wife in order to raise up the name of the deceased on his inheritance so that the name of the deceased will not be cut off from his brothers or from the court of his birthplace. You are witnesses today. Verse 11, all the people who are in the court and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, both of whom built the house of Israel, and may you achieve wealth. Can stop there. But look at the the blessedness and the joy of Ruth's faithfulness, right? Do you see what God does? She says, I'm going to be faithful. She experienced challenges. She says, I'm going to stay faithful. And then what happens? She's blessed because of her faithfulness. The next person in line to redeem the land, Naomi and Ruth. Oh, I'm sorry. I miswrote that. I apologize. Boaz was next in line, who was an Israelite, bought the land, married Ruth, a Moabite woman. That there is the work of God. What a blessed thing for Ruth because she remained faithful. And now she has a kinsman redeemer, Boaz. And then in in verse 13, I think it says she has a child. It says, so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife and he went in to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. Wow, isn't that amazing? I think it is. 
Maybe it's not, but I think it's really amazing. The, the book of Ruth paints a very vivid and precious picture of faithfulness, doesn't it? In my prayer for myself, my prayer for our church is that we will be faithful in the good times, we'll be faithful in the bad times, we'll be faithful in the hard times. We will always be faithful, is my prayer. So I would leave you with this question. How are you doing at living your life faithfully for Christ in His Word every second of every day? Very simple. I wrote this down. Take it or leave it. Faithfulness equals commitment Challenges, blessedness, and joys, regardless of the cost. May we be a faithful church. I find it interesting, an interesting fact about the book of Ruth. Boaz was used to deliver Naomi and Ruth, right? Christ was used to deliver humankind from eternal damnation. If you're here and you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I just pray that you'd come to realize that life is a vapor. Not one of us expected Miss Marilyn go be with Jesus this past week, did we? I didn't. It shows us the frailties of life, and if you have not dealt with your eternal destiny, I pray that you would today. I pray that you come to realize that you are a sinner and that we all will die, and there's a place called heaven and there's a place called hell. And I pray that you come to understand that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord Jesus, you know that my heart has been heavy the past couple of weeks. As I see the things, the challenges we're being faced with, Lord, I just pray that we would be faithful to you, Father. Not only in our words, but Father, in our lifestyles, in our conducts, when we don't understand what is happening, Lord, I pray that we would truly cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. And Father, I pray that we would not waver in our trust. Lord, I pray that we would trust in you with all of our hearts. Lord, I pray that we would be faithful to you. Lord, I, I pray that we would be committed to whatever comes our way. With the challenges, Lord, I pray that we would be faithful. Lord, if there's one here who's never placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I pray, Father, that you would convict them of their sin. May they come to understand that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. We ask that you receive the honor and the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.